Welcome back to part two of our interview with Sheldon Straker, here of our, you know, our own Major Boom story. Let's go, Word. let's go. So we, we had just left off talking about the transition, right, from like street weed, you know, hiding to like now it's legal, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, yeah, what's interesting for me to like hear your story as like a kid and then still progress what is, what was it like? Did you smoke weed that entire time? Did you take breaks? And like, it's different for us because we're, I mean, I'm not super young. However, I, it, it never stopped. Yeah. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. he had to get professional for a minute. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. So what was that journey like for you? Uh, for me, I mean, uh, when I was living in Barbados, smoking weed was part of my life. You know, like mm. it was a weekend thing mostly. Yeah. yeah. Um, when I was, at university there and doing my science degree, my biology degree, my migraines were kicking oh, mm. because of the stress. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I tried my best to manage it with medication. Like I said, there was the inhaler, there was the blood pressure medication, all these different things that were prescribed mm. that really just didn't add any value. They just made things a little bit worse. Mm -hmm. um, and I had a friend who, you know, his, nick his nickname was Plant. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we know. So that, plant. That's how, plant. Yeah. Right? And, you know, he would always come pick me up and we would go a roll and smoke. And I would always feel better after that. Um, but when I decided to come to the United States to go to UMass Dartmouth um, to get my MBA, I decided, you know, I'm going to cut weed out. Um, and I lived with some roommates who were big time smokers. Mm -hmm. And mm. it was hard. Yeah. It was hard. But, you know, I committed to, to not smoking. Um, and after I graduated and I came back to the university as a professional, um, I decided to, you know, explore weed again. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the quality of the stuff that was available here, even though it was, you know, street at the time, was pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I got into vaporizing right off the bat because, you know, I had a, a fiance. Ultimately, we got married um, and she didn't like the smell of smoke. So mm -hmm. I had to find a you know, a way to, to compromise, yeah. you know, not have that smell. Um, and vaporizers were pretty new to the market back then. And mm -hmm. it was just like, you know, basically <laughs> cooking the weed on, you know, like a, a heat element, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, kind of thing. But what year, you know, is, what year is this? Um, this early is the 2000s. early 2000s. Yes. Okay. Early 2000s, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, the and then from there, you know, the technology just kept getting better yeah. and better yeah. and better with, with weed vaporizers and the yeah. weed gets get getting better, better, better. Yeah. So, yeah. so you know i continued yeah, that on that great. journey but you know my, my intake of cannabis throughout my life has always been minimum effective dose mm -hmm. you know i wasn't a get stone and you know couch lock kind of guy yeah. i just want a buzz yeah. i just want to feel better mm -hmm. um and generally speaking that's how i have always used cannabis mm -hmm. um but later in life you know with the advent of uh, decriminalization and medical legalization, I definitely felt a lot more confident about talking about weed with other people and feeling like, you know, it's something that you could actually share education about because being a science-minded person, research was always a part of how I look at things. I just wanted to understand more about, you know, why people gravitated towards cannabis. Mm -hmm. Why, you know, when you look at history, why was cannabis positioned next to every major civilization throw antiquity mm. you know what i mean there is a, a mutualistic relationship between cannabis and, and civilization from mm. my perspective and what i've seen i mean cannabis was found in the grave sites of the pharaohs you know what i mean so there's got to be a reason for that mm -hmm. um ancient Asi asian uh you know um yeah. like mm -hmm. civilization i did a little bit of research and they use that for everything and during some type yeah. of meditation and stuff like that. So, mm. yeah. yeah, it was a part of their pharmacopoeia for thousands of years mm -hmm. for a reason. Mm. You know, it was Even part ours. of it was part <laughs> yeah. of the U.S. pharmacopoeia yeah. until you know, some people with some not so right. you know good intentions decided that because people that look a certain way use it, it mm. couldn't be good. Yeah. You know, mm. and I think we lost as a society when that happened. Absolutely. Um, but now that it's back in the forefront, and you know, kudos to the people in California with the AIDS crisis who really push the issue. Mm. Um, and kudos to hippies for keeping strains, you know what I mean? <laughs> keeping genetics. them going for so long, keeping those genetics, and, yeah. you know? Um, but, but more importantly, kudos to the people who've advocated for legalization and decriminalization and recognizing um, that, you know, black and brown people have been negatively impacted by cannabis prohibition for so long. 
and doing something. They haven't mm. done enough, but they've done something, mm. you know, to try to right some of those wrongs. But more importantly, kudos to the scientists who are out there trying to figure out how best to utilize cannabis as a complement to traditional medicine. Mm. Um, and I'll tell you a quick story. Back in 2019, when I was writing a patent for this product, my father was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Mm. And, you know, some of the research that complemented my patent application included prostate cancer research. And um, there is research that suggests, now again, this is suggested research, mm. right, um, that prostate cancer cells spontaneously die in the presence of uh, THCA, which inspired me to push hard for this patent application because of what my father was experiencing. Mm -hmm. um, he lives in Barbados with my mother, and my brother's still there. And during the fall of that year, while I was writing the patent application, he came up to see a urologist here for a second opinion on his diagnosis. Um, and at that time, I was writing the application and he became a little bit more informed about what I was actually doing. And he started asking me questions about cannabis. Now, my father's 78 years old. So his generation didn't, you know, to them, weed was illegal. Yeah. You know, mm. Even though he's a baby boomer, his particular generation, because Barbados is predominantly Christian society and you follow the rules. Mm -hmm. um, cannabis was just not something that he ever interacted with. But because I educated him about the possibilities of it having some sort of positive effect on his particular situation, um, he was open to exploring it. Mm. And the conversation that led up to him being open to it, he asked me, so how long <laughs> have you been using cannabis? Oh my God. And I said, I've used cannabis since I was a teenager. What? He said, so, so, so wait a minute. So you used cannabis when you were living in my house? <laughs> dude, you never <laughs> got caught, like, Sheldon? Nah, nah, what, dude? Yo, you must walk light, bro. <laughs> Yo, so he has a common, he has a common energy, so you know. Yo, yeah, I the, guess the, the, never, uh, ever. They had no idea. That's insane. Yeah, wow. No idea whatsoever. And I mean, it's not like I smoked in the house. Right, right. right. You Yo, know, but, but still, I came home stoned. Right. You know, time after time. But, but, but what, was, do you, what do you have for siblings? They must have helped you cover up or something. No. No. Uh, my my two brothers. One is older by three years. The other is younger by three years. Um, okay, so middle child. Yeah. Okay. All middle right. child, Matt. Yeah, you just yeah. slip yeah. right in there. Then I can see. Yeah, that. the middle <laughs> child. Yeah, the middle child is um, generally ignored. Yeah, yeah. That that. I mean, I guess that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, the middle yeah. child is like a phantom. You know, your yeah. dad never really knew. Never knew. Yo, but insane. I mean, it wasn't like there was any signs. You know, it wasn't like I was an underperformer in school. Yeah. Or, you know, work or anything yeah. like that. Yeah, you know? yeah. So wasn't a big deal, but, you know, the fact that I was able to actually make this extract and give it to him. Okay, so he did use it. He did use it. You're wow. going to get high today, Greg. Right, let, me, let, me, let me give that round of applause. Let me give that round of applause. You're going to get high it. today. That's a good thing. So did he get high? Well, I made, it, I made the formulation in a way that wouldn't get him high. Yes. Yeah. Because that was not the intention. Yeah. It would help with pain relief. It would help with well, what, what the intention was, is... The intention was to try and get as much into him before he left here. Okay. To go back to Barbados. Yeah, 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 But more importantly, when he was given the diagnosis of prostate cancer, he was put on basically a testosterone blocker. Mm -hmm. And a testosterone blocker, basically the idea is testosterone feeds prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. And the doctor's intention was to basically not give it a source of testosterone so that it would slow down and, and spread. Sounds horrible. But what it did was it sucked the life out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean... You're a man. You need right. testosterone for muscle, for just general health. Especially at that age, too. Especially. Yeah, yeah it slows down. You know, yeah. um, so my intention was to actually stimulate his, ap his appetite and hopefully, you know, slow the progression of the cancer mm. per, the, per, the, per the, the, the research that I saw, you know, THCA being present in the formulation, um, adding some value. But more importantly, being able to give him an appetite so he would eat. Mm. Um, you know, he still has the cancer. It's not something that's going to go away right now. You know, it's it's his PSA level has gone up from six back in 2019 to nine now. So what's, what's PSA? Um, prostate specific anti antigen, which mm. is an indicator of the presence of of cancer. Mm. Um, and 
you know, we're actually looking to bring him here back to the United States to have uh, targeted radiation therapy if we can get that worked out. So, mm. you know, just, you know, for all the people out there who are, you know, thinking about cannabis, understand that, you know, it, it can be used as medicine. Um, there is research that suggests that. But, you know, you can't make any claims about that stuff mm. because there's no FDA stamp on it or yeah. anything like that. But, you know, from the research that I've done, there are big companies out there trying to find ways to farm cannabinoids right now mm. to position themselves for when all the research does come back saying, yes, you can use cannabinoids for this purpose. Mm. Um, but that's that's part of the journey and part of my inspiration for creating a formulation the way how I do is the intent of offering something to people who want to use it for medicinal purposes and want to be able to discreetly titrate the way how they want, depending mm. on you know how they're feeling on any particular day, um, and be able to maintain some some dignity you know as you go forward with whatever illness you're dealing with or mm. whatever it is you're trying to solve. Mm. You know, I want my product to be positioned to meet you where you're at and journey with you to where you want to be. Mm. Um, in a responsible way, um, and like I said, do no harm. So, all organic ingredients wherever possible, um, and sourcing the best possible raw material to work with. So, would your would your father move to Mass, or is he just coming for? Like, he would just come up. I mean, what we've done on, on in terms of reaching out to doctors to understand a little bit more about what that process would entail. It's months. Mm. Yeah. You know, so having him here for a minimum of three months to go through that process. Um, is that, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a good place to be. I'm sure uh, I'm, your formulations, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, so, well, yeah. Uh, you said a little bit earlier um, about, um, you know, the journey with cannabis. Um, it's weird because uh, me and Sheldon are working in the back and during in production, mm-hmm. and we're just having, you know, general conversation. Of course, of course. I don't like, always get the most time to talk to him because we don't work at the same time most of the time, but mm-hmm. we end up talking. Um, and I didn't know the name of the company that he did this tincture with. Like, I, I didn't know. The name of the company? Yes. That's the, his company. Well, I, I didn't. Well, I, did. yeah. no, no, I, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I, I didn't know the company's name. Oh, oh, oh. We were talking about, I forgot what we were talking about. We ended up talking about journeys. Mm-hmm. And then I said, have you ever read the book, The Alchemist? Mm. <laughs> yeah, bro. So I was like, yeah. have you ever read the book, The Alchemist? Because it's mm-hmm. literally about a gentleman that, you know, he wants to find his, per, his personal Perfect. treasure. Mm-hmm. Um, and he just goes through journeys and realizes through this journey that him looking for his treasure, going to the desert everywhere he went, a lot of the stuff that he was going through was just like the treasure that he was actually truly looking for. Right. So then he said, oh, my company name is Mind. Mindful Alchemy. So then yeah. I'm like, okay, all right, this, this is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. So tell us a little bit about yeah. your company um, and, you know, what you guys actually do besides just, you know. If there's more. Well, I mean, the, the company was basically formed to hold a patent. Okay. Um, and right now, like I said, working with, with Major Bloom as a production partner, um, we're bringing the product to market for the first time. Let's go. Yo, right. clap that up, I dude. Wrong, 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 wrong. Yeah. We're bringing it to market. Okay. Let's go. I got you, I got you. Yeah. But the name is very intentional. Okay. Um, and, you know, alchemy is the transformation of something into something else. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? You know, a lot of the stories talk about, you know, turning lead into gold or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, akin to that, I'm turning flour into, you know, a tincture that is usable, is versatile, mm-hmm. and diverse. Um, and the mindful part is self explanatory. My heart and mine are intentionally there to produce this product with the intention of producing something that I would use for myself, that I would share mm. with my family and friends. Mm. And I want to be able to share it with people who are interested in a product like that. Okay. Um, and the mindful part is a lot of thought went into it. Mm. You know, a lot of intent went into it. Um, and even the name of the product itself is intentional. Talk to mm. us, talk to us. Um, the name of the product is Kira's Elixir. And... An elixir is, you know, like a formulation that has a specific mystical purpose because even, you know, to say that the ingredients are coconut oil, hemp seed oil, lecithin, and cannabis extract, 
is to leave an ingredient out, and that ingredient is love and pure intention. Mm-hmm. You can't put, you can't quantify that. You can't put that on the label, but that's part of it. And the name Kira, maybe we should. <laughs> yeah, <Maybe> we, should. <laughs> we can. <laughs> um, but I touch these batches. Yeah. You know, I infuse them with mm-hmm. my soul, my heart, my intent. Mm-hmm. Um, and the name Kira is is because my wife and I lost a daughter back in you know 2017, um, and I named the product after her because of the healing experience that I I went through when we found out we were pregnant. When I met my now wife back in 2013, I was going through a divorce, and at that time I felt like a part of myself was kind of walled off. Um, to protect myself, like part of my heart was just like not available for a full-fledged relationship. And my wife being the kind, loving, you know, supportive person, she met me where I was at, she understood that, um, and she stuck with me throughout that. And it's not, please don't take it like I was being cruel to, to my wife, no, yeah. I'm just saying that because the experience that I had had, I could only go so far in terms of opening up. Mm-hmm. Um, but the minute, we found out that we were pregnant. There was just this light that lifted all of that negativity, that burden, that apprehension from me. And I felt pure joy and I felt healed. Um, and when we lost her, you know, it hurt. It still hurts. You know, it's been five years and I still think about it and it still bothers me and I know it still bothers her. But every day it gets a little bit lighter. But in her honor and because of that experience, this product is named Kira's Elixir because of that healing that I went through um, during that experience at the beginning, the joy of being pregnant, the anticipation of what a child is going to bring to our life, our family's lives, mm. what you know, raising a child was going to be like, what she was going to look like, what she was going to be like, you know, the, the hope, potential, possibility. Um, and the loss was devastating. But you know, I choose to walk away from this and focus as much as I can on healing. Um, you know, when I see a little girl sometimes and she looks a certain way, I think, you know, what would my daughter have looked at, at look like at that age? Mm-hmm. But, you know, you got to walk away with what you can and salvage the positive parts. So I choose to focus on the healing and the positive parts of it. Mm-hmm. And this product is named in her, in her honor and is with that intention that I bring that to the market. Right. Well, That's I'll say this: her name will definitely live forever, for for sure. And I, you know, what I'm saying, I will, this is, you know, clap it up. Yeah, yeah, for and, sure. You know, what I'm saying for sure. Um, yeah, and let me interject real quick because the amount of, uh, I guess, experience that you bring and story and intentionality is mm-hmm. super important. As someone who's probably at this point hundreds of conversations about ideas and what can be. As simple as forming your business, having a patent, getting, gaining your experience, you know, um, knowing your story. Like you, you came in here knowing exactly what you wanted to do. And I can tell you, Sheldon, everyone can talk about ideas. You are someone that executed on that idea. You hear me say that all the time. And this is exactly it. Not only the patent, not only the company, the product and how to make the product <laughs> You know what I mean? Like that is admirable, especially because it's extremely unique. It's not, I mean, we make pre-rolls, <laughs> you know, it's nothing. And I feel you on that love. Cause there'd be times where I'd be doing a batch and I'm just like, I might not be feeling the greatest right now. So let me, let me reverse that and be like, yo, bless these freaking pre-rolls. I hope everybody has a freaking great day, whatever it may be. So the fact that it's rooted in a, such a deep story, that, that means a lot, you know what I mean? So. You know, shout out to you for you know Much using the positivity and I appreciate you know, that. Oh, of course, man, of course. So kind of like um, piggybacking off of what Ulysses said, um, he talked about you know the intention and transforming an idea into a full action. Um, can you talk to you know maybe a younger person that might be listening, someone that might see it on IG or whatever whenever we post this? Um, how did you get to that? Because I don't know if everybody. I mean, I don't know your I don't know your full story if that was how you've always been or if you had to grow into that mm. um, or whatever the journey was to for you to get to that point where there is nothing else blocking mm. your mindset of what you're doing. Mm. I, I would say for me, as I look back on my life, I mean, the question is a really good one. 
as I reflect back, I've always been mission driven sometimes. Um, and, and once I hit a goal, sometimes like, the interest could fall off. I mean, I've been a pro- professional photographer. I've, I've done art. I've had exhibitions. And, mm. you know, th- it's funny because some of the best art I've ever done was on Blue Dream. You know what I mean? Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Yeah. But, um, you know, but there was a point in my life where that served me. And once I got past needing that, I let that go. I don't do art anymore. You know, well, but mm. well, I do trans- a different kind of work. It's transformed, it's transformed. <laughs> and I and I think that that's part of it. I like to give things my full attention until something else catches my attention. But nothing has caught my attention as much as cannabis mm. because of how much of a role it has played in my personal life, um, and to see how you know its acceptance has transformed in society. I want to be a part of that. Because I remember being a kid smoking weed in the bamboo patch back in Barbados and being embarrassed about the fact that I smell like weed. Mm-hmm. And now I go home every day smelling like weed. That's good. Proudly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And to, to know that somebody somewhere is going to benefit from something that I create is beyond fulfilling. Mm-hmm. You know, to know that when I, you know, have a problem with my migraines or whatever it is that, that I'm facing, I can reach for something that I created. But to know that somebody else could do that means a lot to me. Yeah. Um, I hope that answers your question. No, 100%. It, it definitely helps because, like, someone like myself that uh, I consider myself an artist, like, I, I do podcasts. This is not something that I just thought about doing one day. Like, I thought about doing this for, like, two years. And then I was like, had to figure out, all right, how do I use any type of equipment? Mm. How do I get equipment? How do I, like, get people to help me? Or, like, how do I do it myself? Like, I didn't know how to do I just, you know, so, and I've had my own journey from going from not knowing what I really wanted to do and not knowing what I was actually good at. Like, I didn't really know what I was good at. I was just, like, I'm good at a lot of stuff. I'm, I'm okay at a lot of stuff. Like, I'm pretty good at a lot of stuff. But I was never an like, expert at anything. So seeing you, hearing your journey... And also, you know, just working with you and, you know, just being more mature at the age I'm in right now, it's very relatable to understand where you are and to, you know, continue to feel what I'm passionate in. And people might not understand, but I have a vision for it. And, you know, the outcome will be the outcome when it comes. Yeah. Up. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a good thing to... Got to surround yourself with that. Come on yeah. Yeah. Come on and I would say, you know, to anybody that has an idea, explore it. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and... There will be obstacles because I will tell you it gets hard mm. and it continues to be hard. Um, I've given up so many times on trying to bring this product to market because I couldn't find the right partner, the right place, the right situation. Mm. Um, but, you know, I read this in a book and I remember the name of the book. So the author, please forgive me. But, you know, the heavens don't bar all paths. OK, so if you want to get from here to there and you find there's a fence. You can go over it, mm. you can go under it, you could go around it, or you can go through, through it, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but it's up to you which path you choose to use, but the path isn't barred 100%. Mm. Yeah. It's just you need to figure out how to get around that obstacle. Yeah. And there will always be obstacles. It just, it's just real. Yeah. Obstacles you know? are opportunities, right. you know, opportunities right. for growth, no, for I sure. Right. And, and to be more creative, you know, I think that that's part of it, you know, trying to be downsize sometimes you got to downsize your ambitions at the time because that's what the situation will allow Mm. and you know i think a lot of challenge comes from our egos um and because our egos tell us you know you're you're worth more than this or you know somebody blows smoke up your butt and says you know you deserve more than this Mm. you know you got to be able to say well at this time this is what i'm willing to accept because it gets me closer to where i want to be yeah yeah I mean, it's a, uh, it's good. It's a good. To, it's good to hear because um, most people have dreams, and sometimes their dreams are small. They're like, "Well, I can't do these things," so mm. they don't push that hard. Um, and you talked before about how you had a lot of different ambitions, and you, you know, pursued them. You felt like you got to the point where you were, you know, successful in it, and then you got bored with it. Um, and for me, when I hear that, I feel like the dream just wasn't big enough. Because, you know, when a dream is actually what you really want, where it's, 
you know, it's so big that it's like, it's gonna take forever for this thing to be to get bored of, you know. Mm. Like I see Ulysses, I like from his story, from his journey to where he is right now. I'm sure he's been in a million rooms where his ideas to somebody else is oh, it's an idea. Like you don't have time, we don't have time for this. Mm. But he never stopped, continued to go, and it helped grow to even something larger and make it even more more worth it at the end. So, um, you know, like I said, from I mean, I I. I I watch you guys every single day. I stay quiet and I just <laughs> I go about my business, but I do respect yeah. how you guys go about your business. So. No, I appreciate uh, you know. that. Definitely appreciate that. Sure. And so I, I got two questions. Two sure. questions. <laughs> I don't want to, because I know we're coming up on time. Your patent does it have cannabis like the word cannabis in it? Oh yeah. Okay. The, the name of the patent is Methods for Preparing a Full Spectrum Cannabis Elixir. Oh wow. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, what are your thoughts on the U.S. patent? Are you familiar with the U.S. patent? I have a U.S. patent. No, no, no. The government's patent. Oh, the government's patent. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, can you can you really say you're surprised? <laughs> um, you know, when when I was doing my research into cannabis patents, mm -hmm. um, the most patents are held by the U.S. government. Yeah. Well, cannabis patents or in general? Cannabis patents. Cannabis patents. Oh, yeah. so there's more than one? As far as I know, there's more than one. Holy wow. crap. Um, on, in my research along with, you know, because when you're doing a patent, you have to do a patent search, right. right? And you have to see if there's anything out there that's like yours or whatever the case may be. There's only like one that's close to mine and it's being held by a Chinese person. Mm. For cannabis? Uh, for cannabis. Mm. But there's a lot of patents out there for cannabis. Mm. There are a lot. And, you know, my wife yesterday actually showed me a product that was being promoted on Facebook or somewhere she saw it. And, you know, it was a topical and it said patent pending. So mm. I think the intellectual property game has just begun mm. for the average person getting into intellectual property. And I think people are recognizing that they need to protect their ideas. Um, and, and cannabis as medicine is, is real. It's a real thing. Yeah. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think, you know, I think people are beginning to recognize that big pharma is coming. Mm. You know, big pharma is coming for this industry because they see the potential. You know, if you were, if I was an R.J. Reynolds, and you know, people are backing away from cigarettes right now, I'd make pre rolls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so b before we leave, we're about like a a minute left. What is something that you want you know the listeners to know about you, your patent, your product, and you know, cannabis or whatever you want them to know about? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, I just I'm a regular guy. Yeah. You know, I mean. We talked a lot about things that I have done. No, I, I'm just a regular guy. I had a problem and I needed to solve it. That's the best business. Is right. You know, I, the problem I needed to solve was mm. I needed a better way to consume cannabis reliably. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I did. I, and it led me to where I am right now. And, you know, hopefully this is a springboard into other things. Mm -hmm. You know, Cures Elixir is one product. Um, the process that I patented can create a whole bunch of complementary products. And I look forward to exploring all the other product ideas that I have. Mm -hmm. um, but more importantly, I want to bring products to the consumer that they are going to like, that's going to add value to their lives, that they're going to want to recommend to their friends, that they're going to want to come to Major Bloom to pick up. Let's yeah. go. And you other know? dispensaries. You know? We, right, we right, distribute right, right. too. Right. <laughs> we'll start here, though. We'll start here. Though. Yeah, we'll start here. We'll start here. No but, but even if we distribute, you still got to come to Major Bloom to get it. Yeah, that's yeah. True. You know what I mean? That's so. True. Um, you know, being part of this industry at this stage, it's awesome, right. you know? And for those of you who've never had to, to live under the stigma of the negative aspects of cannabis prohibition, you're living in the best times right now. Right? Yeah. Mm. You know? Enjoy all these crazy weed strains. You know? <laughs> oh, Enjoy yeah. it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Canuck cooking, all that, you know? <laughs> Canuck. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, all right. Well, we are Infused Influence. I am your host, Harry, here with Ulysses, and thank you again, go. Sheldon. Appreciate it, sir. And uh, you've just been infused. Let's go. All right, man.